Well, hello, Panther Nation. There are very much exciting times about to happen here in Midway ISD, and we are pleased to report to you that the one-to-one -one initiative is about to be rolled out in our school district, and I have today uh, Susan Fletcher, our Director of Instructional Technology, and Adam Fine, our Executive Director of Technology, here to talk about uh, the one-to-one -one initiative and the rollout, and to also inform you of some other places to find this information in the future. What we're talking about, though, is preparing our students. We live now in the 21st century. We want to use 21st century skills. We no longer want to use skills from the 20th century in order to teach uh, students to, and prepare them for the 21st century. So that's why we're looking at and, and, and so proud to launch this one-to-one -one initiative for our school district and for our, and for our community. I'd like to, Susan, Ms. Fletcher here to talk with you a little bit about how instruction uh, is, is changing in Midway ISD schools. So Ms. Fletcher, could you tell me a little bit about that? I'd be glad to. Well, we're going to talk about reimagined learning and we want students to be able to create and collaborate and research and problem solve all in an environment that's truly participatory and authentic. Uh, we also want kids to be able to be creators of content and not just consumers of content and we want them to produce. Uh, we're using this through a model called SAMR, which moves the integration from substitution to redefinition. And an example of this would be taking a book report. We've all written book reports in the past, and you would take this and maybe create a movie trailer, to create a video and of the book, and then the librarian could then take it and use it as an enticement to have other students read the book. Interesting. Well, one of the things we talk a lot about, too, in, in 21st century skills is Oh, a phrase uh, that Mr. Fine likes to use called ubiquitous, I mean anytime, anywhere. And, th and that's what we're talking about also with our one-to-one -one initiative is, as Ms. Fletcher mentioned, students do have the ability anytime, anywhere to find information. Uh, and so we want to make them better consumers of this information because they, they, they have that access to do that. It's no longer waiting for, for information to be printed and put into books and then published and that they're able to find that information right away. So that, that, that's interesting too. So Mr. Fondo, tell us a little bit though about, uh, as Ms. Fletcher mentioned, we're reimagining how we deliver content and how students find content. Uh, and so we need a, a tool, and the tool uh, you're going to tell us about is what we've, we've chosen for our one-to-one -one initiative. Absolutely. So one of the reasons, one of the things that we've been doing is looking at, since we initiated the bond process, we looked at the devices, and we had a committee that looked at the devices, and we, we talked about it's not about the device, it's about changing instruction. But along those lines, when we started looking at the devices, we knew that um, some significant changes were coming from Apple. We had committee meetings, we had staff meetings, and then I was doing some due diligence on the back end, talking with other school districts about what they were using and where they were headed. And we decided to wait because we knew that Apple was coming out with a new device. The iPad was chosen through the com committee meetings that we had based on the instructional value of the device. So along those lines, we then began looking at the implementation of what we were gonna do. Well, we knew this device, which is the iPad Air, so was this coming is, out. This is the new iPad Air. Many of you may have heard about Apple's new new launch of their latest uh, technology and latest version. So, and Mr. Fine, tell us though, what is different about this iPad Air in terms of an, for an instructional focus versus so, what we already have in some of our classrooms, the iPad That's a, that's a great question, Dr. Kazanis. So the, the reason that this is really a game changer in our opinion is based on the performance this is more than twice as fast as the previous model the significant aspects are that the Wi-Fi is also twice as fast but a really game changer that the iPad has over all other production models of any other device is what they call the M7 processor mm -hmm. which allows students or will allow students as applications become available to, to use motion-based applications for measuring and scientific applications so when we start talking about the instructional merit behind what this device gives you, it gives you some additional advantages over what there's nothing else in the market like it. Exactly. And so we are, as, as Midway, I, for Midway I see, we're very proud to be introducing uh, the iPad Air to our students. And as Mr. Fine mentioned to you about um, the different applications for it, we're, we're proud to launch this for grades uh, 2 through 12. And all of our teachers will have the iPad Air. We have. Uh, 
uh, repurposed our iPad 2s for our preschoolers through grades, uh, first grade and have those available for them as well for every student. Again, our initiative is for over our 7,450 students to each have their own device. And so uh, that's excellent. Uh, and also want to make note about the iPad Air. It is within our, our budget, the, our budget for the bond that we had for our, this one-to-one -one initiative. We're very pleased about that. Uh, we've been very pleased also things that we have been working since the bond passed in May of 2013 is the financing of our bonds, the selling of the bonds, the interest rates we received, and our, our structure, our payback structure. We're proud to see to show that we're able to pay these back within a four-year four period. And so, but Mr. Fine and his staff have been working really hard, of course, also on our uh, Wi-Fi capabilities and, and the technical side of that. Ms. Fletcher and her team of folks have been working, uh, developing uh, instructional videos for our teachers, working on staff development, and also, most importantly, looking at what a rollout's gonna look out. How are we going to distribute over 7,000 iPads to our students? And so, Susan, Ms. Fletcher, can you tell us a little bit about that? I'd be glad to. It's been a busy time. We plan on starting the rollout for the high school on January the 13th, assuming all the pieces still fall in place like we anticipate that they will. And that will take us a week to roll out that many devices to Absolutely. our high school because of the, the number of students. But then we will just progress down to our middle school and continue until we have all the elementary schools covered. So we're real excited about that. We've been working with the teachers and the principals um, as far as classroom management and what the instruction is going to look like. We've worked on detailed um, processes for rolling the devices out to the students and what we're going to be sharing with the students. Before the student though can receive a device. Mm -hmm. um, parents need to go and sign an electronic parent agreement, which I think we'll talk yeah, about probably you, in a few minutes. You bet, you bet. That's going to lead to the next question about this. Of course, going to a digital environment, a one-to-one -one initiative, we have created, the district has a website that's called mlink that you can access mlink.midwayisd.org and uh, this is this site's going to host a a number of a number of items and information for our parents and students uh, and for our staff members are about, about our one-to-one -one initiative and uh, most importantly it's going to have a frequently asked questions section that we will continue to adapt and, and update and uh, the, the a student and parent agreement are also included on, on this website uh, that we do ask all parents and students to electronically sign before the actual device can be issued. Right, the parent agreement is on MLink, and so parents can go online, and it's required that they sign it before their child will be given a, a device. The student agreement is posted on the website. We will actually have the students sign the agreement when they're given the device, and then our 7th through 12th grade students will need to bring their student ID the day they get their device. Without an ID, they will not be given a device. That's a good point. And I guess one of the most important messages also we wanted to, to provide to you today is that we are expecting a high level of responsibility among our students and being responsible for this device because we know Midway students are going to be thrilled to have this, this, this tool with them each and every day, but we also though have the high expectation that they will, they will be responsible for them. And that's some of the reasons why we made the decision uh, in this initial rollout period not to have a user fee for our students or for our parents about, about having uh, an iPad. Uh, we still do reserve the right as a district maybe next school year to look and see if a user fee is needed. Uh, it'll just depend upon uh, the usage and, and, our, and how well taken care of the iPads are. We have the expectation that our students are going to do just fine and will be, will be take, do the due diligence to take care of them and we have that expectation and certainly hope uh, we do not have that, uh, ever have the need to, to look at a user fee for the iPad. So. One of the things we did was looked at the user fees by surveying school districts across the state of Texas and one of the, one of the things that we discovered in that process was that school districts about 50-50 charge and about 50% don't charge. So we decided at least at the initial onset for this rollout that we would not charge and see how the devices performed and how they worked with the students. And you know we have a high level of expectation that they'll be uh, careful with the device and they'll be they'll do their due diligence with the device and return it in good working condition for the school district. But we wanted to make sure that we had done our homework to, to follow up with the other school districts to see what they were doing as well. One of the things that we're also doing is including a cover case, an OtterBox Defender Series, which is the best case on the market today Excellent. for all of the devices, so that hopefully the students who are maybe less 
stellar than they need to be with their device still won't break or um, harm the device in any way. So. Exactly. So we feel like we're providing that backbone for our students uh, to have the best uh, technological device for them. Uh, as I said, the responsibility of the student is to take care of that device, to, to have it fully charged when they come to school each and every day so that they can have, take full advantage of the opportunities in the classroom. And of course, to, to be good consumers and, and, uh, and be a part of this reimagining learning that Ms. Fletcher has mentioned to you. Ms. Fletcher, can you tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the website in link that you've been working so much on this, this past semester? Yes, I'll be glad to. Uh, the staff, my staff and I have been working on this website and there are several different pieces of information. And first of all, you'll see the, the mm -hmm. FAQs so that parents can just tap on the category and they can see the FAQs. Next to that, is rollout information. A oh, rollout schedule then for yes. each of the schools? Yes, so if I have a yeah. high school student, I would go to the high school and I can find out information about the parent agreement, about the dates, what's Excellent. required. And then I see you have a parent tab, so I assume that's where you can find the user agreement. Exactly, so parents can see um, the parent agreement, they can see the student acceptable use policy as okay. well. As also, we'll be doing posts on every, every one of the categories, and that's up-to-date information or announcements. And then the, um, the learning in the 21st century, it's one of those tabs that I, I, I can imagine that you all have created just as a posting of different articles so that our, our community can see where, where we're going. You're exactly <laughs> right. That's right. It's not anything related to Midway necessarily, but just other information we have found. The last one I really like is Spotlight. Oh. Spotlight is where we highlight Midway ISD staff and students and what is happening in Midway ISD related to um, the iPads, but not just iPads, anything related to technology integration and good things that are happening with our students and their learning. And there's so already some there, things out here. Okay. There's already some yeah. things there to show even before the one, the one initiative that we've been doing in the district. Correct. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. And of course, the first thing to do is check out that website, uh, peruse and, and, and read carefully the, uh, the uh, parent agreement, uh, electronically sign that, and so that your students then are equipped uh, come January 13th, for example, at the high school to be issued their iPad. I want to thank you all very much for being here today.